All right, traders, a very warm welcome. Are the global markets heading for a big correction? Was yesterday the highest the global markets have been? And are they heading towards a good correction now? So let me tell you where I'm getting all of this from. As I speak, the FTSE 100 of UK is down about 1.5%. The DAX of Germany is down about 1.3%. The CAC 40 of France is down about 1.4%. The S&P 100 has opened just about 30 minutes back. It opened about 30 odd points down but has recovered substantially to the close of yesterday. So Indian markets as you all know have had given a big gap down today. Nifty, Nifty Bank and there was no buying pressure at all in India and we moved in a consolidated range the entire time. So let me tell you a bit fundamentals that have happened today and that have happened yesterday. So firstly, today around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, there's been word on the street that a lot of MPC members have reported, and I quote, that the India GDP is expected to see the deepest contraction in history. Yesterday, if you all were aware, the Federal Reserve, you know, the meeting had concluded, the FOMC meeting, and... You know, the Powell of Federal Reserve had noted that, you know, America is going to have significant trouble over the economic recovery. So that was another issue. And that was one of the reasons why all the global markets had given a big gap down today. And finally, today, the jobless data of America is out. And believe it or not, America, the initial jobless claims have gone above 1 million again. So it currently is at 1106,000 versus the previous is 963,000. The estimate was about 921,000. So the jobless data is not good. We have again crossed 1 million jobless claims in America. So today I want to talk about all of this. This has been all over the news, all over the internet and everyone is worried and that's exactly the question I want to answer now. Are we headed for a big global correction? So watch it till the end and stay tuned. Before I get started, I just want to put it out there that whatever I say is for educational purposes. It's, upon, it's based on my analysis and my technical knowledge. So do not blindly follow what I say. Do consult your financial advisor and take informed decisions, right? So I understand charts very well. I'm good with my technicals. So I'm going to talk about technicals. So firstly, Bank Nifty has been weak. It's been really weak for a long time. We made a high in July of 23,198. And we've been underperforming ever since. We're not able to go above the 20 moving average now, the 20 moving average high. So let me tell you what I've put on the charts. I have not put a traditional 20 moving average. I have made a moving average channel. So the yellow line is the 20 moving average high plotted and the blue line is the 20 moving average low. So I want to keep the screen as clean as possible and base my analysis on that. So Bank Nifty has been underperforming and one of the reasons for this underperformance is due to HDFC Bank. See, you have to understand the constituents of your Nifty, Bank Nifty or whatever index you are trading. So HDFC Bank has not been able to breach this level for a while now. The 1070 level has got a good resistance there. And if HDFC Bank, which has a 30% weight, uh, around 30% weight in Bank Nifty, if it's not going to go higher, Bank Nifty is not going to go higher. It cannot be driven by your SBI, which has about 10% weight, uh, and the other bank, which have relatively about 10 to 15% weight. HDFC Bank has to perform for Bank Nifty to go up. And same is the case for your Nifty also. Reliance, I've already plotted these lines. Reliance has started to fall down. It started to show a correction towards the 20-day moving average. You can see it's taking a good support from this 20-day low. So again, Reliance has about 13 to 14% weight if I'm not wrong in Nifty. And if Reliance doesn't go higher, you can't expect Nifty to reach new highs. So these are the two big guys we have to focus on for our indices to go higher or lower. So that's based on them. Let me first talk about the global markets and then I'm going to come back to Indian markets. So the S&P 500, you know, amazing run it has had. It has almost, you know, reached newer lifetime highs. 
it touched the pre covid high it's fully retraced 100% from that february march high it had created and just shy of you know crossing that high we have seen that the markets have taken good resistance at this level of around 3400 odd points so see what am i uh, one thing i want to tell you about the markets whoever follows technical there's one simple rule and that rule is that you know when you move in a range of support and resistance whenever there is a breakout things have to come back test the resistance and then go back higher this you know retest that i'm talking about might happen tomorrow might happen 20 days later 30 days later but it happens now coming back to what i'm trying to tell you guys let me go back to the example of s&p 500 so see what's happening this was a this was a good range that was created around may and you can see once this range was broken you are coming back again testing this 3000 level and then again going higher again you can see this was the low created this was the high created when you have broken out of this range you are coming back testing it and then going higher and same is the case with this high that has been created let me just make a, a more clearer line you once you break higher you have again retested and then moved back up so what i'm trying to establish is whenever you break out of a range you always try to come back and retest whether you do it right now or whether you do it later and now you can see the high the previous high is somewhere around 3274 and i'm going to mark this with a rectangle so it's clearly visible so another thing that i i want to before i get into this another thing that i want to add is this is a moving average channel and moving average channels are very good supports or resistance for your market and you can see very well that in the past these levels have given really good support and this has continued to be so and currently this level that we have drawn is coinciding with a 20 day low average so the worst case scenario currently i see what's the see whatever view that we are giving has to have a stop loss so how much do we stay bullish in the markets currently i would say we should not panic so much what we should do is we should, we can expect a correction all the way down to this zone on the s&p 500 and this is a zone where we can take not only a support but also a confluence of the 20 day low so we can take a good support in this region and then again bounce back up higher what we will be worried about is when we are breaching below this zone and that is the reason when we will be worried about so that will be like a stop loss being hit for all of us and that's when we have to change our view and become a little more bearish in the markets so that's on the s&p 500 so as i said a lot of consolidation has been happening at the lifetime high of s&p 500 and we are not able to go above that same is the example in dax also of germany we are not able to go above these highs and we have started consolidating and moving lower so for dax my level comes to around 12640s so that is your you know the 20 low moving average and up to that point i don't have to worry a lot some kind of corrections can happen in the market before i come to the indian markets i want to establish a relation between the dollar and the indian markets this is not something you should base your analysis on but it's a correlation that has been there for quite some time and i feel it's quite important so i'm going to add nifty to the charts of dollar uh just give me a second yeah so what i have done is i've done a very simple analysis i have put the charts of us dollar dxy on the screen cfds and i have put nifty so the candlestick chart is of the dollar the nifty is the red uh, the line chart so see what happens when dollar goes up nifty will go down and you can see it very well so when in march nifty crashed the dollar went up exactly from the same time so you can say these have a inverse relation so one goes up the other goes down and so on and you can compare how things are going so when dollar started going down and you can see it started consolidating towards the downside you can see that the nifty index started going higher as simple as that and you can compare it 
with each uh, initial you know each uh, movement that's happening on these indices so for example when dollar goes down you can see nifty goes higher and when dollar goes up nifty goes down as simple as that correct and even even the current market scenario why nifty has been rallying so much is because dollar has been becoming it's falling down and down and when dollar falls down we all know that money flows into the emerging markets and that is the reason the emerging market markets are doing so well the equity markets at the same time your precious metals your gold all these metal stocks titan all these companies have been booming because of this not primarily but it is one reason and another thing is you can see the current market also when uh, the dollar fell down you know your nifty went up and so on and so forth but now what's happening is if you see the uh, the movement now let me hide nifty again what's happening on the dollar chart is dollar has started to show a consolidation it started to show a consolidation in the sense it has found a support at this level it's not able to form lower uh, lows it is forming a good support and it is bouncing back so one thing that can happen is if we break this high this high has been set as 93.73 approximately so if we go break this high obviously as i said if dollar goes up nifty is going to go down so nifty will come down but if we take this resistance as i said 20 moving average gives a good resistance this channel i have plotted will give you a good resistance you can see dollar has given a resistance here it's given a resistance here here at the same time here so this 20 high is giving a good resistance so this is a confluence not only this level is a good resistance on the horizontal lines but also the 20 day high is a resistance confluence so this will be a very difficult point for the dollar to breach and if it breaches things will go bad for the markets at the same time but if the dollar starts to go down then the markets will continue to go up again so i hope this uh, the relation between the two of them is clear don't base your analysis just on this but keep it in the mind now coming back to nifty bank nifty i'm not talking about because i have already said it's damn weak and uh, things are not really good unless until your hdfc icici all these companies don't perform the mid caps and all can't drive the rally in banks you have to understand that coming to nifty which is more important and coming to the question are we correcting to 10000 so putting this 20 day moving average channel now see how effectively this has been held throughout june from june onwards so the 20 day high is plotted here the 20 day low has been plotted here i put a normal simple moving average you can see the settings settings is 20 high and 20 low in june on june 15 see what happened markets went up it crashed all the way down gave a good pullback and where did it see a support it saw the support at this level exactly the 20 day low so it's getting a good support good cushion in this channel and that's the beauty about a trending market if you are in a trending market if you don't time your markets correctly it's fine the trend the 20 average is going to give you a good cushion same was the case here a good cushion was provided by the 20 day high a good cushion provided here as well and here when there was a deep kind of pullback all the way down to this resistance so see what happened a breakout happened we saw a good correction a good deep retracement and it happened and we got cushion where we got a cushion at the 20 day low exactly 2 3 sessions back again we found a resist sorry a good cushion at the 20 day low what am i trying to say firstly index has started to become weak no doubt to that we did close higher up we have closed above 10400 and that was extraordinary but we have not been able to stay above that and we have started again to consolidate at a 10340 level this level is quite important 10340 all the way 10360 370 it's a very important level and we have not been able to break this level for quite some time since around the 26th uh, 22nd of july we have consolidated kept on hitting it and not moved forward right so now what am i trying to say i'm trying to say that understand this guys don't become bearish just now and sell everything that you are holding that you're moving towards a correction things are not really bad as that bad as they seem what i'm trying to say is we have to have a stop loss whatever view that we are keeping has to have a stop loss because everyone can be wrong and you have to accept if you are wrong i may be wrong whatever i'm telling you i might be wrong but the thing is 
you have to have a stop loss so that your view is stopped out and you can change your view and make money on the other side so if you're going short right if you're going short at the current market price i would say a 10500 can be a safe level a 10500 is a is a new high if we are hitting that if we are closing on that level it automatically becomes a stop loss and we will be breaking out and going to a higher level but currently what i'm trying to say is what can the correction happen today as you saw in nifty we had a big gap down and no can no gap filling happened you know there was no pressure of buyers we stayed in a range all together my question is number 1 this level the 20 day high if this level is sustained you aggressive people will make good money but if this level is breached and i'm i'm expecting this level to be breached in the couple next couple sessions then the cushion will be coming to this this number this number will be around 11150 so the 20 day moving average low that will become a cushion for me so if this 20 ma low is broken on a closing basis then we can become a little bearish in the market i am not expecting a correction to 10000 please understand the first correction that we can see will be towards a level of 10800 to a 10830 level this can be a correction zone and we can so the target number 1 is what is the target if we go break this level then we will be taking support at 11150 if i am breaking 11150 then the support automatically will be coming around 10850 basically a 10800 to 900 level this will be a good cushion if i am going below that then we'll keep on moving below and i had given a level a couple of months back and then my same level will be brought again 10560 that's an exact level i'm willing to give you right now so if this 10830 zone is also broken then 10560 should be a good line of defense i'm not expecting the markets to go below that the reason is markets are a leading indicator and things have gone bad everything has been discounted as you can see currently with the results also things all these companies are giving good plunge in the net profits but still company shares are going up 10 10% why based on the management commentary and they are so positive about the ongoing future and if you are listening to all these con calls that are, that are being held every single day after the results by the ceo or cfos they are telling us that diwali is coming and we are hoping luck is on our side so people are becoming hopeful things are opening up hotels are opening up now the gyms have opened up things are opening up now even the flights are expected to open up in the next couple of weeks or couple of months so according to me in my opinion the worst is behind us but we can't rule out a correction markets should give a correction and they if they are healthy corrections why because they will be bought into and they give us good opportunities to buy good companies at discounts so when these corrections come buy companies good quality companies good long term plays at discounts and hold them tight so currently what you should do is if you are getting good profit in stocks and if you're not sure about the market book early profits is no problem in that you know at least you are booking some profits and at the same time if some losses are there in your portfolio and companies are not comfort the sector is not comfortable right now you can try to you know cut your losses and rather than just keeping keep holding the losses and letting them run out so that's that's exactly what i wanted to portray today i hope all of this has made sense and all i would say is be safe you know in the current scenario and be hopeful is what all i can say everyone can be bearish in the market being bearish is not e- not very difficult everyone can say be bearish and sell but the difficult part comes if we are hoping for new and higher highs to be achieved so i am being hopeful in this market and i am keeping my the bullish view my the bullish view that i have in the market my stop loss will be around 11000 to 11150 and if we are going closing below on a if we are closing below this on a closing basis then i am no i am very hopeful that these levels will be achieved and we will have to see markets in the red towards 10830 and 10560 so that's it for now let me know in the comment section what you guys feel because i want to know what the you know what the word in the in the in your in your mind is what you are thinking what's your strategy like and i would love to read all of your comments so that's it for now Thank you so much for watching.